Summary of the Book of Unknown Americans by Cristina Enriquez Arturo and Alma Rivera bring their preteen daughter, Maribel, across the border between Mexico and the United States and up to Newark, Delaware to start a new life. Maribel was in a mysterious accident and got a traumatic brain injury. This has left her with a flat emotional state and a number of problems, like losing her short-term memory and having trouble remembering some things. Mirabelle's parents hope that by sending her to Evers, a school for kids with learning disabilities or brain problems, she will be able to learn better and soon start to act more like herself again. Alma and Arturo start their new lives when they move into the Redwood Apartments. Arturo gets a job at a mushroom farm, where he stands on his feet for hours in the dark without stopping for food or water. Alma has a hard time getting around her new neighborhood because she misses her old home so much. Alma learns how to live in Newark after getting to know her neighbor Celia Toro. She starts taking English classes at a local community center and gets excited about what life in America could bring. Celia's son, Mayor Toro, is a skinny, nerdy high schooler who can't seem to live up to his father's dreams or those of his soccer star older brother Enrique, who went to college in Maryland on a sports scholarship. Mayor becomes interested in the beautiful Maribel and he is happy to take on the task of trying to talk to her and find out more about her. Garrett Miller, a bully at Mayer's school, makes fun of Mayer for having a crush on the retarded girl. Eventually, Garrett Miller follows Mayer and Maribel to their apartment complex and taunts and insults them even more. After saving Maribel from Garrett's comments, Mayer starts to feel protective of her, and the two spend more and more time together, getting closer and closer. Raphael, Mayer's father, is a hot-tempered man with big hopes for his son. He wants Mayer to be a football star, but he doesn't know that Mayer has quit football and is lying about going to practices and games. Raphael isn't sure why Mayer is so interested in Maribel, and Alma Rivera makes sure that the two can only hang out while being watched either at the Rivera's flat or the Toros. One afternoon, Alma sees Garrett bothering Maribel outside her apartment. Her shirt is pulled up over her bra, and Garrett has her up against a wall. Alma scares Garrett away, brings Maribel back to the flat, and doesn't say a word to Arturo about what happened. Garrett makes fun of Mayer even more at school, and the two get into a fight. Raphael and Celia are called to Mayer's school for a meeting, where they find out that Mayer hasn't been on the football team for a while. Because he is angry, Raphael grounds Mayer, which means he can't spend any time with Maribel. At Christmas, the heat in the apartment complex goes out, so the Toros throw a big party in their apartment to welcome their neighbors. The Riveras, the Mercados, Quisqueya Solis, Benny Quinto, Nelia Zafon, and Micho Alvarez are all there, as well as the owner, Fido. The tenants enjoy their different cultures together, and in the middle of the party, Mayer and Maribel sneak away. Maribel gets a red scarf from the mayor and a kiss. Alma is still afraid of Garrett, so she tries to tell the police about him, but since he hasn't done anything wrong, the police can't do anything. While this is going on, Celia Toro's sister, who is back in Panama, gets a divorce and gives a big chunk of her settlement to Celia and Rafael as payment for all the money they have given her over the years. Rafael decides to buy a car with the money, and his family chooses a Volkswagen Rabbit. Mayer is still grounded, but he still goes to the Rivera's flat and tells Alma that his punishment is over. Mayer wants to impress Maribel, so he offers to show her the inside of the car. He takes his father's keys, and the two make out in the parking lot. Arturo loses his job at the mushroom farm, and he and Alma talk about how their well-thought-out plans to make it in America didn't work out. Arturo is the only one in his family who is allowed to work, and he only has 30 days to find a new job. Alma has stopped going to community house, so Celia starts to teach her English. Alma teaches Arturo a few important English words, but they don't help him get a job. Alma and Arturo celebrate their wedding anniversary by taking Maribel out for drinks. The family doesn't have any money so they just order water and sit in the busy restaurant and enjoy themselves. Maribel seems to be doing better now, and she laughs at her dad's jokes. The Toro family and the Rivera family go ice skating together at a nearby pond. 
Alma thinks she sees Garrett, and Arturo notices that she is nervous. She says there is nothing wrong. Later that week, Kiskea goes to see Alma and Arturo Rivera. She tells them that she saw Mayer and Maribel making out in the Toro family car. At the same time, Rafael Toro has also lost his job. Everyone is having a hard time because of the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008. A few days later, Alma calls Celia and tells her what Kiskea saw. Celia and Arturo scold him and tell him he can't see Maribel anymore. The Riveras tell Maribel the same thing, Maribel gets sullen, and she seems to stop making progress in getting out of her shell. Alma is afraid she'll never see her daughter again. Rafael Toro gets a job delivering newspapers. When it snows for the first time of the season, Mayer and his friend William steal Rafael's car. But Mayer leaves William behind so that he can go get Maribel from school and show her the snow for the first time in her life. Mayer drives Maribel a long way out of town, and he doesn't pay attention to the texts on his cell phone. Maribel loves it when he gets her McDonald's. The two keep driving and end up on a cold beach. They kiss and Maribel says that she wishes the moment could last forever. Alma starts to worry when Maribel doesn't come home from school that afternoon. She goes to see Celia Toro, and Celia tells her that Mayer and William are out. They try to call Mayer, but he doesn't pick up the phone. Alma calls Arturo to tell him that Maribel has gone missing. She then tries to call Maribel's school, but no one answers. Alma tells Arturo when he gets home that there has been a boy who has been mean to Maribel. Alma tells Arturo that she wanted to protect Maribel on her own because she wasn't able to help her when she fell off a ladder at Arturo's building site and hurt her brain. Alma apologizes to Arturo, and Arturo calls the police. There is already a patrol car looking for Maribel, but Arturo doesn't want to wait. Alma tells him that Garrett lives in a neighborhood called Capital Oaks, so Arturo puts on his hat and goes out the door. Mayer and Maribel try to get home during the winter, but as the weather gets worse, they have to pull off the road. It is dark when they wake up. Maribel seems to come out of nowhere and tell Mayer about her scary experience with Garrett. The two then go home. Raphael is waiting for them outside the apartment complex when they get back. He tells them to get in the back seat and drives them to the hospital. Once inside, Celia Toro tells the three that Arturo is in surgery. Maribel and Mayer are both confused and upset. Celia makes them feel better, and they all wait for hours for something to happen. The Toros go home, and Maribel stays with her mother at the hospital. Mayer feels guilty for what happened. He begs his mother to tell him what's going on, and Celia tells him that Arturo was shot while trying to find Maribel. As the rest of the day goes on and friends and neighbors stop by to help, the story continues, Arturo went to Capitol Oaks, where he got into a fight and was shot at by a man with a pistol. Mayer keeps thinking about the scene in great detail, and it makes him sick with fear and guilt. That night, Arturo has died, and the Toros get a call about it. The next morning, Mayer and Celia show support for the Riveras by going to their flat. While Mayer and Maribel sit together in silence, Celia and Alma hold hands. Maribel asks Mayer if what happened was her fault, and Mayer tells her it wasn't. In his mind, he starts to wonder who exactly is to blame. Trying to make sense of such a random and infinitely complicated set of events makes Mayer think that Arturo's death may have nothing to do with any of them. Alma and Maribel make plans to go back to Mexico. Mayer offers to come visit Maribel or come find her someday, but Maribel tells him that she is not lost and does not need to be found. Alma talks about how her husband died, he was shot by Garrett Miller's father, who will be charged with killing him. Alma is told that she and Maribel will get justice from the officials. Alma wants to bring Arturo's body back to Mexico, but the doctor tells her that it will cost $5,000 to ship the body. She knows that she and Maribel must leave the country because they no longer have the right to be there. Their neighbors stop by with flowers, food, and sympathy as she and Maribel get ready to leave. 
Celia comes over and tells Alma that the neighbors and people in the area have taken up a collection and raised more than $5,000 to help get Arturo's body back and make Alma and Maribel's long trip easier. Alma and Maribel leave two days later in a black pickup truck driven by a quiet guy who knows Rafael. Alma thinks that Rafael gave the man a good amount of money to drive them across the border. A few hours into the trip, Maribel starts to feel sick. When they pull over to the side of the road, she throws up and says she wants to cut her hair. Alma realizes that her daughter was never really missing, and that she has always been the same person she was before the accident. Alma remembers something Arturo said a few months ago when they were driving to Delaware, every place is beautiful if you give it a chance. The two get back in the car and keep driving. About the author. Henriquez was born in Delaware to an American mother and a Panamanian father. He went to Northwestern University and the highly regarded Iowa Writers' Workshop. She has written two novels, The World in Half in 2009 and The Book of Unknown Americans in 2014. She has also written a book of short stories, Come Together, Fall Apart, in 2006. Henriquez has written prose for many magazines and newspapers, including The New Yorker, The New York Times Magazine, and The Wall Street Journal. She's from Illinois. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.